As I mentioned in my introduction to Jewish apologetics video, the Lubavitcher Rebbe was called Lord and God by his most devout followers. Rabbi Ariel Sokolovsky is a Moldova-born Chabad rabbi in Portland, Oregon, and a more amiable soul would be hard to find. Yet Sokolovsky maintains a blog he entitled Rebbe God, and this refers to Schneerson as the Rebbe Almighty, among other uh, adultery sorbiques. Drawing on rabbinical sources, he attempts to show that this is not as revolutionary as it sounds. He concedes that there are a few people like him who will openly call the Rebbe God. He claims, however, that many people believe it, but do not say so openly for fear of scaring away people from Chabad altogether. So I say not only do most of the devout followers of Chabad call the Rebbe God, uh, but the practice is more mainstream than most Chabadniks like to admit. The Rebbe himself encouraged this, saying that it is okay to pray to him, since the Rebbe is the essence of God enclosed in the body, as the Rebbe writes in Luku de Slikos. And now the article continues, saying, The voice of the moderates who believe the Rebbe is in fact dead, though most of the group still adhere to his belief of his ultimate resurrection and coronation as Messiah, the belief is increasingly cowed, with violent brawls breaking out and spilling on the streets on a regular basis, leading to scores of hospitalizations and arrests. Even the installment of a memorial plaque can cause a riot. As one rioter told the press, he's alive, and yet they're writing that the Rebbe is dead. So even the moderates uh, believe that the Rebbe will be resurrected and crowned as Messiah. Maimonides said that if someone dies, it disqualifies him as Messiah. Chabad shows that Maimonides is not the be-all and end-all of Judaism or of Jewish law. Chabad believes that Maimonides is dead, uh, dead wrong in that area, and still considered normative Orthodox Rabbinic Judaism by most Orthodox Jews. Now, many of the members of uh, Schneerson's congregation were happy to explain what they mean by the Rebbe as God. The magazine asked, what did the pins signify? And they answer, well, it symbolizes their dedication to the Rebbe above all else. And they say, what, above all else? You mean above God? And they respond, well, as far as we are concerned, we can pray to the Rebbe, and he can deal with God for us. And so the magazine asked, well, is that not turning the Rebbe into a god himself, like an idol of your own creation? And they say, well, the Rebbe was not created. The Rebbe has always been around and always will be. So, okay, the magazine interviewer says, if one believes in God but leaves the Rebbe aside, is one still Jewish? And the followers say, when the Messiah reveals himself, those who don't see him won't be saved. So you should work on, uh, he's interrupted, look, what you need to do is start with God and work your way up to the Rebbe. So while it may seem bizarre to describe the electrician come Rabbi Schneerson in this way, many of the people see the, uh, the Messianist view Schneerson as a demigod. They are loath to state this explicitly, but they will assign him characteristics of God, pray to him, and when pressed, suggest that there really is no difference between him and God. Since the Rebbe was perfection personified, he is greater than any man that ever lived. Ergo, he is godly, omnipotent, omniscient, and unlimited. Virtually no one within the movement today is willing to deny that Schneerson was the greatest man that ever lived, nor are they willing to deny that he was perfect. None had a problem with praying to Schneerson, using his books for divination in place of the Bible. Even among those viewed as moderates, the Rebbe, is still often substituted for God in normal conversation, sprinkling their remarks with comments such as, May the Rebbe help you, or the Rebbe is watching over us. Even among the moderate minority, a distinction between Schneerson and God is decidedly blurred. Asking adherents whether Schneerson will return as the Messiah is unlikely to yield a negative response. So, I mean, my response is just like demigod. It seems like... Uh, they claim the Rebbe was not created. That's not a description of a demigod. That is a description of God, of Hashem, of God Almighty, both representationally and ontologically. None have a problem praying to the Rebbe. Again, Chabad disproves the notion that Judaism has no concept of Messiah as God. For the Lubavitchers, Schneerson is both Messiah and God. The article continues. Schneerson wrote of his father-in-law as the Messiah, though in the previous Rebbe had died, Adherents believe that when the Rebbe referred to his father-in-law, this was code for the Rebbe himself. And so, the magazine asks, uh, do they think Schneerson is alive? And the response is, well, the Rebbe is no normal human being. Uh, he was a polymath who studied under Einstein in Berlin before inventing the atom bomb. 
and to the magazine as hell, how do they view the connection between Schneerson and God? And he says, well, the, the, the Rebbe is not something different from God. The Rebbe is a part of God, to the British teenage student. And so the magazine asked, well, doesn't this idolize Schneerson in the literal sense? And they said, well, we can't connect to God directly. We need the Rebbe to take our prayers from here and there and to help us in this world. We are told by our rabbis that a great man is like God, and the Rebbe was the greatest man ever. This is how we know he is the Messiah, because how could life continue without him? No existence is possible without the Rebbe. Would they go so far as to describe the Rebbe and God as one of the same as some extreme messianists have done? And one of the students says, no, some people have gone too far and described the Rebbe as creator. Basically meaning that there are people who see him as God literally ontologically, as the creator of all things. So they say God was born in 1902 and is now 105 years old. You can pray to the Rebbe and he will answer. And he was around since the beginning of time. But you must be careful to pray only to the Rebbe as a spiritual entity, and not to the body that was born in 1902. So, well, does this mean the rabbi has a will of his own? What if the rabbi and God disagree? And the response is, well, this is a ridiculous question. They're not separate in any way. So they say the, so the rabbi is a part of God. And they say it's more complex than that. There's no clear place where the rabbi ends and God begins. And so the magazine asks, finally, does that mean the rabbi is infinite, omnipotent and omniscient. And the Chabadics say, yes, of course, as an Argentine student says in Hebrew. God chose uh, to imbue this world with life through a body. So that's how we know the Rebbe can't have died, that his actual physical body must be alive. The Rebbe is the conjunction of God and human. The Rebbe is God, but he is also physical. So yeah, some people have gone so far and described the Rebbe as creator, so they, they basically hold to Christian theology, exactly the same way the church has viewed Jesus, as the God's Shekinah enclosed in the body. And in fact, Schneerson described um, the Rebbe in that way. That's why you can pray to a Rebbe. So please, don't ever let any anti-missionary or rabbi or Kiruv person tell you that Judaism is incompatible with the idea that anyone who dies before the prophecies are fulfilled can be Messiah. Or... Uh, don't believe them when they say Messiah cannot be God, or that God cannot become incarnate. These are just lies and propaganda against belief in Jesus, and the situation with the Rebbe proves it. Shalom Aleichem.